Dear friends of dermoscopy, welcome to this podcast which continues the series of podcasts on inflammatory skin diseases. In this one, we will analyze how dermoscopy can help us in the differential diagnosis among common dermatoses that manifest with inflammatory lesions on the face. At first, I would like to remind the basic principle that dermoscopy is meaningful only within the clinical context of a given patient and that the differential diagnosis is always defined clinically. This means that when we see a patient with a skin eruption, there are two main possibilities. The first is that we immediately come up with a diagnosis based on the characteristic morphology and distribution of the lesions, like in this case of acne. The second is that we do not immediately have a specific diagnosis, but we do have a differential diagnosis of more than one diseases which can manifest with this eruption. Exactly in the context of this particular differential diagnosis, the dermoscopic findings should be interpreted. Several dermatoses manifest as erythematous papules or plaques on the face. Among them, the most common are discoid lupus erythematosus, sarcoidosis, lupus vulgaris, and more frequently, rosacea and seborrheic dermatitis. This is an example of a patient presenting with bilateral erythematous plaques on the face, present from several months. As usually with facial lesions, the clinical differential diagnosis is broad. Dermoscopy of these plaques proved particularly useful since it revealed the characteristic yellow patches or plaques, which histopathologically correspond to dermal granulomas combined with linear branching vessels. This combination is highly suggestive of a granulomatous skin disease, in this case, lupus vulgaris. Here is another papule of lupus vulgaris, again displaying a yellow background color and linear branching vessels under dermoscopy. This is a lesion dermoscopically very similar to the previous one, but with a different diagnosis. In this case, the diagnosis is sarcoidosis. So, the pattern of yellow patches and linear vessels is highly suggestive of a granulomatous skin disease, but insufficient to differentiate between sarcoidosis and lupus vulgaris. This is another example of sarcoidosis manifesting as a solitary papule on the face and dermoscopically displaying yellow patches and linear vessels. As shown in this table, this dermoscopic pattern is very common in granulomatous dermatosis and very uncommon in other entities, so it's particularly useful for their recognition. This is a facial eruption consisting of multiple erythematous macules and papules. Granulomatous rosacea is another disease that might exhibit yellow color under dermoscopy, again because of the underlying granulomas. However, the predominant dermoscopic feature here is not the yellow color, but the characteristic vascular pattern of polygonal vessels. This vascular pattern, which is named honeycomb vascular pattern or polygonal vascular pattern, is very useful for the diagnosis of erythematotelangiectatic rosacea since it can be found in all rosacea lesions and in no other disease included in the differential diagnosis. This is an example of two patients with a clinically similar eruption on the forehead, where application of dermoscopy immediately allows the diagnosis of rosacea in the upper case, while the lower lesion is seborrheic dermatitis, which dermoscopically shows dotted vessels and yellow scales, such as all other types of dermatitis. This is a plaque developing on the cheek of a 60-year-old man. In fact, this is an early lesion of discoid lupus erythematosus, displaying under dermoscopy a few follicular plaques and the characteristic perifollicular whitish halos that correspond to early perifollicular fibrosis. In fact, several dermoscopic features have been found in discoid lupus erythematosus, and it has been shown that they perfectly correspond to the various histopathologic alterations that take place during the course of the disease. Of note, the dermoscopic appearance of the disease is time-related, mirroring the underlying histopathologic changes with disease progression. 
At an early stage, dermoscopy reveals perifollicular whitish halos and some follicular plaques. Afterwards, the hyperkeratosis becomes more intense, but perifollicular halos and follicular plaques can still be seen in the uncovered parts of the lesion. Later, telangiectasias appear, while the fibrosis is not only restricted around the follicles but starts to become more diffuse. In late stages, pigmentation structures may also appear. Finally, end-stage lesions dermoscopically display nothing but white structureless areas corresponding to diffuse dermal fibrosis. To sum up, early lesions of this coil lupus are dermoscopically typified by perifollicular whitish halos, follicular plaques and hyperkeratosis, while late lesions display telangiectasia, pigmentation structures and white structureless areas. In conclusion, dermoscopy facilitates the recognition of facial inflammatory skin diseases by revealing characteristic findings for each disease. The polygonal vessels of rosacea, dotted vessels plus yellow scales in seborrheic dermatitis, regularly distributed dotted vessels in psoriatic facial, facial lesions, yellow patches and linear vessels in granulomatous skin diseases, and follicular abnormalities in early lesions of discoid lupus erythematosus. <laughs>